you've you managed to get on stage at some point and put it most of it to be to yeah, you just in one minute, but or or you sharing the stage. Um, Neil's been talking about dark energy and what is it? Neil is now a computer scientist, but he used to be a physicist. Uh, he's currently a senior lecturer at the Open University, volunteers at Clover Club, Cove Club, and is the co-founder of MK Hackathon. Neil Smith. Woo! inside the spaceship, as you do. Uh, from that, he got to general relativity, and working out that gravity isn't actually a force, it's the shape of space-time. Um, and there's a question, why is gravity so different from every other force in the universe? We don't quite know, but we'll move on to that. Um, so he said, I've got this great theory of relativity, can I use that to write down an equation that describes the entire universe? And in 1922, someone called Friedman said, yes, you can. That's it. So we've got this big, scary you know, um, equation. We're going to spend a bit of time with this, so go over what this means. This bit here is talking about the size of the universe. Here's a bunch of boring constants, I don't care about this. This row is the density of mass energy in the universe. This is how much stuff there is in here. And this is a bit about the shape of space. Okay? Now, it turns out the space is completely flat, in the same way that the surface of a cylinder is completely flat. So that last bit disappears. Um, the density depends on how much stuff there is and how big the universe is. Um, and so you actually want to split out radiation and matter and how it works. So this bit is all the matter in the universe, that includes all the dark matter, which is 85% of the stuff we see. Um, I'm not talking about dark matter, I'm talking about dark energy. So, although we don't know what dark matter is, that's not what I'm talking about. Um, so, we've got this um, first order nonlinear differential equation, describes how the universe changes, um, so you can quite happily solve that in your head, can't you? Yeah. Yes, you can, you absolutely can with the right analogy. So, this is the universe. Okay? And in the model, it is quite small, yeah. So we're going to represent the size of the universe by how high this ball is. Okay? So this is a big universe, and this is a little universe. And relativity says that the thing that's acting on the universe is gravity. So in this model, we're going to represent gravity by gravity. <laughs> <coughs> so, what we want to do is, given this equation, starting from some initial conditions, as in I'm holding the ball, if I let the universe evolve naturally, what happens to the size of the universe? It, yeah, if I drop the ball, it goes down. There you go, you're a cosmologist, you're doing that. Um, so, this says the universe will tend to collapse over time. Now, in 1922, Einstein, along with all right-thinking people, knew the universe was static and unchanging. So, he didn't like this answer, so he invented the cosmological constant to hold things in place. So basically, he invented the hand. It's a, a bit of a hack. Um, that's where we were, 1929, this guy turns up, Edwin Hubble, um, he invents a couple of things, um, or discovers a couple of things. One is that the universe is actually quite a bit bigger than just our galaxy. Um, and he also came, actually was able to prove general relativity. So the good news is the universe is not static. The bad news is it's expanding. So the question is, how can you get this ball to assume it's expanding? How can you get the ball moving upwards? How can I make this ball go up? Yeah, so I could throw the ball up. Okay? So it means at some point in the past, we've seen something quite big 
like a bang that made the universe move up. Um, but as it does, what happens to the size of the universe over time? So watch the ball. What's it doing? Go up and come down. So what does that mean for the size of the universe? Bigger and smaller. So we get to end up with a big crunch. There's another solution to these equations. What is if I throw the ball up really hard? Really, really hard, sort of NASA levels of hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's just going to go up and stay up. It's going to go on forever. Um, and that's another way the universe could end. It could be just the stuff just drifting away, the heat death of the universe. Um, and of course, there's this dividing line between the two, where the universe kind of hovers between expanding and contracting. And that's where we were, our understanding, until 1998, when a large team of astronomers started looking at supernovas. Because it's really unclear which side of this line we're on. We're not too sure which way. We seem to be right on the critical value. Now, why that is, we don't quite know. Um, so they're trying to work out where we are. And they discovered that the size of the universe, whoops, ah, how do I go back? There! The size of the universe is doing this. It's accelerating. The expansion is accelerating. It's like I throw the ball up in the air, and then it goes up and it slows down. And after a while, it starts speeding up. And the ball speeds up more and more the higher it gets. This is strange. Now, even for cosmologists, they think this is strange. Um, so what's happening? So it's like there's this extra force pushing on. And we don't know what it is, this thing. So it's got to be dark something. And the mathematics means it looks more like energy than matter. And we can't use the name matter because that's <coughs> not dark matter. So we call it dark energy. It's this stuff that's pushing up. Um, and it seems like the bigger the universe is, the more it's pushing out. It's like the density of this pushing out is, is the same. So we've got this thing that's acting on a cosmological scale that's a bit constant pushing out. So we're back to the cosmological constant. So Einstein's ugly hack was actually correct all the time. And if you work out the numbers for how this works, radiation is having no particular effect at the minute. Matter, including dark matter, is about a third of the universe. And dark energy is about two thirds of it. So, we've got some idea of what dark energy is. We know how it's behaving. We've got an idea for the size of its effect. What is it? What's the mechanism that's underlying, underpinning this? Um, there's actually some, a fair bit of consensus in the cosmological community about this. Ask a bunch of cosmologists, what is dark energy? You'll get the same answer from all of them. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>